have much of it. Well, the only thing that's really had an effect on the Eagles, I think, is the wide receiver market being nuts and guys getting 20 some million <laughs> to catch passes. Uh, you know, that, that definitely, I mean, we all thought, I think, that the Eagles, that a veteran wide receiver would be a very big target for the Eagles in free agency. busy last 24 48 hours even though they really haven't had any players there's still a lot of eagle stuff to talk about because of howie roseman's contract extension and fletcher cox's contract machinations that the eagles are dealing with here to lend us a helping hand on those two fronts and all other eagle fronts is our buddy les bowen les you're you're where we got to look up at you is that the way you set up your camera so we have to be down below. It's to look early. Up Sorry. I haven't forward. figured this out yet. Nah, that's good. It's good, Les. It's you not should a good be, angle, but. You, uh, you, you should know. be above us all. It's a great angle. <laughs> you are above us all. But uh, is this what you miss the most? These arcane uh, restructure, trying to figure out freaking the most complicated contract in the history of mankind? Absolutely not. But uh, <laughs> in fact, I. I hate, apparently I missed your discussion of exactly where this will help them with the salary cap. I'm puzzled. I, you know, well, I, I, you... I've called it a Jason Kelsey contract. He's on the Jason Kelsey contract. So I looked at Jason's contract. Yeah. Um, and he's getting 14 million because that's the number going around for Fletcher somewhere in that range, 14 million. They gave Jason 14 million. Um, and there's a small base salary. I think it's 1.12 mm-hmm. or something like that. The signing bonus is a little bit over 10. Then they have a roster bonus in there for three. And the cap hit ends up with avoidable years in the Eagles trick ends up at just over 8 million. But um, he yeah. had a contract. Yeah. And the dead money from that contract doesn't. Yeah, the dead money, that. the dead money's. Yeah. Dead money's a different category. So, so how? Well, it's not. I mean, how do they save money here? I mean, what? It's what? Well, like, and that's so they the make part, it post June first. Yeah, post June. It's 1st. like a thirteen million dead cap this year, and like fifteen million next year, or something. Well, uh, here's here's the issue, and even Jason Fitzgerald, um, who's the over the cap guy, and I think he does the best job of anybody who follows contracts, but. Like, nobody has the right numbers because they restructured this thing right. so many times. So, you know, the 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 number we're being given is six somewhere between 16 and 18 million of long-term cap relief. So by that they okay. mean by that they mean post uh June 1st. Um so they'll know they're getting a little spike. But we have to see. I mean, nobody really knows, uh, because they They've changed this thing so many times. Okay. But what what is clear is they had this money guaranteed to Fletcher on Thursday, and that's what said they don't have to pay that now. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, but the dead money, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's part. That's they're going to have some dead money, no question about that. But I think they will resign him. I I just don't think uh, he's a hot commodity. Uh, Yeah. I I think. Fletch will be, I don't know if he'll be surprised, but uh, the way he's played the last couple of years and the kind of money that he, yeah, even $14 million, I, I just don't see a team anteing up for that for him uh, at this stage of his career. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But if somebody does go out and sign Matt Ioannidis or somebody like that, you know, uh, I just don't think uh, – you know, Fletch is a great icon, uh, all-time Eagle, uh, you know, wall of fame and all that stuff. But if you watched him last season, not that hard to replace, I don't think, uh, really. I mean, it, it's hard to replace in terms of what other teams, like, try to scheme for him and double-team him and stuff like that. But in terms of the actual production, you, you can get that somewhere else. Real quick, Les, because – my ears perked up and you've been around this team for a long time. And that's what I said. As soon as they 
confirmed they were releasing Fletcher and there was no Jeffrey Lurie quote. There was no mm -hmm. uh, uh, Howie Roseman quote. There was no Nick Sirianni quote. This is one of the best players in franchise history. When they are truly moving on from a player like that, they give them that kind of right. uh, 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 whatever you want to call it. But uh, when that wasn't there, did that kind of let you on to say, uh, something's going on here? Because you, oh, especially you know when they talked about that there's actual quotes from the, the team about uh, working well, yeah, they, they, reunion. Yeah, they, 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 they don't yeah. ever say that yeah. if they're going to be caught, you know, like, whoops. <laughs> you know, I, I'll be yeah. amazed if they don't get this done. But I've been amazed before. But, you know, it's it seems like they're just giving him a new contract and uh, somehow this helps. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll play. I'll play devil's advocate. I'll be the bad guy here. Um, the Eagles did this because they could. Mm -hmm. That they acknowledge how good Fletcher Cox is in the pantheon of all-time Eagle great players, but he's just not the player that he was three years ago, two years ago, one year ago. He's a descending player, and they don't want to go above and beyond for a descending player. But they also want to do the right thing by an all-time Eagle great. So they made a judgment call and they released Fletcher Cox. They're working hard at being able to bring him back on a contract that he'd accept and it would work for them. And it's working for them if they put it out there as of right now. Mm -hmm. What happens if in 24 hours they're hearing things that no one around the league is coming close to the offer that they've got on the table for Fletcher Cox? And I asked Johnny, he said, oh, yeah, all 14 million of it will be guaranteed what if they could get away with a lesser deal? What if that's they interesting? I don't know. I don't know what happens then. I think probably he stays out there hoping somebody, you know, uh, doesn't get what they want in the draft or, you know, that, that suddenly there is a market for him at some point, but those don't tend to be big market deals, big money deals. Uh, when you sign later in free agency, you know, that's, that's very rare that someone gets a lot of money after the first wave of free agency. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, again, I think I, I kind of think it's all but done. You know, I, I just think that they wouldn't be talking about it if it weren't very close to reality. I doubt Fletcher really wants to leave. He and Jonathan Gannon seem to patch things up by the end of last season. Fletcher was being used more in the way that he was accustomed to being used. He's been here 10 years. He's never been anywhere else in the NFL, uh, you know, unless, uh, you know, the Rams want you to play with Aaron Donald or something. You know, I just don't see you know, how it benefits him to go join Carson Wentz in Washington or something, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, Zach Ertz was trying to get him out to Arizona. Yeah, that may, yeah. That, that's kind of yeah. interesting there. That yeah. would be uh, that would be kind of neat. But I don't know that Arizona really wants to do that. I mean, Zach isn't the gm yet yeah. but you know uh well, i guess we'll see but i i think from from what we heard last night i gotta think uh just like Ch claude Giroux getting traded today i just have to think uh, you know we're headed in that direction of him returning to the eagles yeah and there is a slight gamble that's what i said anytime you give somebody their freedom the rams might call uh, the rams might be on the phone with todd france right now Les. who yes. knows and then you could change uh, your mind. And we've already seen it in free agency. A couple of players, Randy yeah. Gregory, uh, J.D. McKissick. I think there Zedarius, was a third. Uh, oh, Zadarius Smith. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they all agreed to terms originally with teams and changed their minds. So until you put that uh, pen to paper, anything can happen. And everybody talks about being a business. Business works both ways. The player sure can does. turn around. And, and do what he wants as well. But I, I want to ship with you, Les, to mm -hmm. uh, the opening days of free agency because it's a tradition like any other. I got my first. I'm sure you got them every year on Thursday. Remember, new league year is Wednesday. I got my first declaration. Eagles offseason is a disaster <laughs> in one day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in one day. Um, but are you a little bit surprised that it's been a trickle? Hassan Reddick, uh, good good value signing, it seems, for what they need. 
Um, and it trickled from there. And obviously around the league, you see big names getting popped yeah. off. Or is this just business as usual for a disciplined organization? Well, I'm a little surprised in that it's been such so crazy around the league. I, I did not anticipate some of the things that have happened uh, elsewhere. But none of them really had much of it. Well, the only thing that's really had an effect on the Eagles, I think, is the wide receiver market being nuts and guys getting 20 some million to catch passes. Uh, you know, that, that definitely, I mean, we all thought, I think that the Eagles, that a veteran wide receiver would be a very big target for the Eagles and free agency because they're young. They have some talent at wide receiver uh, with Devonte Smith and, and, you know, uh, uh, Quez Watkins, but they really could use, a strong veteran presence and a guy who's really good uh, to kind of lead that group. And we all kind of thought that would be a very natural, it looked like going into free agency, you know, a month ago that there'd be a bunch of people to choose from. And you had, you figured the money would be about kind of what it was last year with a little more. First of all, a bunch of guys re-signed with their current teams <laughs> and the market, <laughs> Uh, got scarce in a hurry. And then the guys that were out there started getting uh, amazing deals that, uh, you know, unprecedented deals. Christian Kirk. Yeah. How about that? I thought Ooh. they must have signed Captain Kirk, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> uh, Lord, you know, and, and I think that has affected the Eagles. Uh, yeah. They wanted Christian Kirk would have been a nice fit, but I mean, yeah. you and they wanted it. Mike Williams too. And apparently, yeah. you know, so now we're going to be looking at somebody like Zach Pascal or something like mm -hmm. that. And, uh, you know, and, and, but who knows? There's everything that happens, you know, raises other possibilities. The Rams thing yesterday. Yeah, was Robert Dante. Woods. Yeah. Yeah. That suddenly Robert Woods might be available. What do they want for Robert Woods? You know, I don't know. But, you know, that's other doors open. Uh, so that's not I don't think that the offseason is a disaster. I they've done some things they needed to do. Uh, they, they did get Hassan Reddick. I'd love to see them get a, uh, a veteran wide receiver and a veteran safety, but I don't think you can say the off season. So that, until you get to the draft and those three first rounds. Well, I, I was being facetious, you know, one yeah. day. Oh, I know, know I know, but yeah. there are people out there who are going to jump to those kinds yeah. of conclusions. You know, it, until you get to the draft in those three first round picks, I don't think the off season is anything, you know, that's the off season right there for yeah. me uh, in terms of the long run of this franchise. There's certainly a big chunk of it. All right. Yesterday, the best wide receiver in the national football league was traded. It wasn't traded to Philadelphia Eagles who could use a wide receiver, veteran wide receiver. Oh, by the way, he's the best wide receiver in the National Football League. So who couldn't use him? He gets dealt from the Green Bay Packers to the Las Vegas Raiders for a first-round draft pick and a second-round draft pick. Well, you just mentioned it, uh, uh, the fact, Les, that the Eagles have three first-round draft picks. So they could surely part with one. So would they be willing to part with their second-round draft pick? For the best wide receiver in the National Football League. Now, I know he had some say over it because he was just yeah. on the tag and he inked a new, long term, very expensive deal with the Raiders. Eagles miss out here on not acquiring Devontae Adams? I don't think so, just because of what you said there. I don't think he wanted to come here. I don't think he wanted to go anywhere other than where he went. Apparently, the Packers offered him the same money to stay which kind of mystifies me. I don't know that I'd be eager to jump to the Raiders from the Packers. Uh, the Raiders play in the toughest division in football. Um, he is reuniting with his college quarterback and good friend and Derek Carr. Uh, but I, I, there's no connection here with Devontae. And I, I don't think that was ever uh, a possibility really. The money would have been hard for the Eagles to, uh, you know, hard to do much else uh, if they'd have done that. I don't know what they would have had end up having to do in terms of restructurings or releasings. And, you know, uh, I just don't think that was ever in the cards that the Eagles are not at this point a top contender. You know, 
He's a veteran player who wants to win. We can debate whether he's really put himself in a position to win, but I think he thinks he has. So no, I don't think they, I don't think they were asleep at the switch there. I think it just wasn't uh, something that was going to happen for them. Uh, speaking of big name, big money players, I think we can finally, even though some people still refuse, I think we can finally close the book on Deshaun Watson, who was down to the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons. I think he's going to go home. He's from Gainesville, Georgia. Um, I think he's going to go home to Atlanta. That's why there's this, uh, the Falcons have to do something with Matt Ryan. But it's interesting, Les, because you bring up the money and Devontae Adams. Not that you're right. I mean, Devontae Adams wasn't going to consider here. But just from the money perspective, you can get things done in this league if you want. The Eagles proved yeah, that last Yeah, you can get them year. done, but we're yeah. seeing the effects. Like with this Fletcher Cox thing, you can get them done by pushing money into yeah, 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 yeah. years. Yeah. But at some point, you have to – like last season, the Eagles went without a player or two that they could have gotten in free agency had they had room, had they not had, you know, uh, Carson Wentz's $33.8 million NFL record dead cap charge. And people say – because teams don't like go out of business or start playing with 10 players on the field, people say, Oh, the salary cap is meaningless, but it really isn't meaningless. It's, it's more nuanced than you think. People talk about cap hell. And I don't think that really exists, but there are cap implications of things, you know, and now maybe next year when there's supposed to be a huge spike in the cap, maybe that becomes moot. But right now, I think for this year, the cap is still pretty real for a lot of teams, including the Eagles. And that's why I think Fletcher Cox's deal came down the way it did, because they wanted to be able to move cap charges to next year when the cap is supposed to yeah. go uh, significantly up. All right. Uh, so you tell me they didn't miss out on Devontae Adams. Did they miss out on Allen Robinson? He ends up landing with the Rams, who already have Cooper Cup, who yeah. have Robert Woods. Who they say they're still going to bring back OBJ. Damn, how do the Rams keep adding these wide receivers? And the Eagles are talking about Zach Pascal. Explain this to me, Les Bowen. <laughs> well, the Rams won the Super Bowl. <laughs> the Eagles and they won the really Super Bowl. All right, it was offense. a couple of years ago, but it's not like they didn't win the Super Bowl. Right. Well, they have a really exciting offense. Uh, it's They're in L.A. They play in an incredible facility. Um, uh, Sean McVay, you can touch the hem of his garment. Yes, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a pretty big deal out there. But Alan Robinson was the guy, I guess we talked about him on here at some point. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I really, I did think the Eagles would be in on him. And I'm, you know, the money was big, but I kind of thought they would be trying to get that done. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Uh, if I'm Alan Robinson, I'd probably rather play for the Rams right now than the Eagles. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, with Jalen Hurts, but uh, you know, yeah, that's one you can say that you know one of the names going into free agency that I really thought you know they would target and uh, it didn't happen. That's that's something I brought up with Jody a lot, Les. The way the Eagles play. Um, if you're Mike Williams, we talked about Mike Williams, um, and he was never getting uh, away from the Chargers to begin with. But if he did, even if he did. Um, you know, what would you choose? Uh, Justin right now, Herbert? it's a run first team. Yeah, know. it's a run first team. It's yeah. a run. So if you're Devontae Adams, you're used to getting the football a hundred plus times, and you're Allen Robinson, and you have a chance to go to a Sean McVay offense with Matthew Stafford chucking the football down the field vertically. It's more fun. I just talked about Fletcher Cox and, you know, yeah. when he was upset last year early in the season, he was used to playing under Jim Swartz where it was three technique and go get the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden Gannon shows up and says, well, you got to play some five. You got to play three. You got to play four. I it's not as much fun. Receivers want the football Are the Eagles. Is that part of the problem for the Eagles right now? Because of the way they play offense. Yeah, I, that's a good point. I hadn't really thought about it too deeply, but that could be very much a part of it. Uh, they're not, uh, for a lot of reasons, they're just not a, 
super attractive destination for a, for an offensive player. Um, nobody really knows what Jalen Hurts is uh, unless you like you find a guy that like played with Jalen Hurts and really likes Jalen Hurts or something like that. Uh, you know, it's not clear that he's going to be an elite quarterback or even that he's going to be the quarterback here after this season. Yeah, you know, it's uh, they're probably down the list for a lot of these guys. And uh, it's frustrating for fans because that is a huge need. I, again, I think uh, I, I think they, they have to somehow upgrade there. And I don't want to we, we've talked, I think, about all the draft picks that they've used at wide receiver the last several years, which has made their defense really old and creaky because they didn't spend those draft picks on corners or edge rushers or linebackers, certainly not linebackers and, uh, or safeties. And, uh, you know, to think that you might have to go real high with a wide receiver yet again is, is, uh, is frustrating. I think. All right. So let me ask this question to both you guys. Um, If the Eagles are a run-heavy offense and wide receivers are going to blanch at joining the Eagles because they don't pass it enough, they didn't last year, and you're projecting going forward that they're not going to do it this year, how the hell are they ever supposed to change the narrative? Do we have to wait till Jalen Hurts is gone and done? Do they have to trade for a a uh, guy who's made – oh, by the way, Jason Jalen Hurts didn't make the Pro Bowl this year as an alternate third. Well, he didn't ever get the there, though. He was yeah, chosen he as an alternate, there. but alternate, he, didn't, yeah. he didn't get into the, yeah. the, uh, you, you, the roster. You get the point I'm trying to make. How do they become an offense that a team can actually say, hey, if we put the bo- most, most money out there, we can get one of the most talented wide receivers in the league? How do they go about doing that? Well, winning, you know, even if you I think if you win, if you win the division, if you if you're clearly, you know, a team that wins a playoff game or two, uh, the style of offense becomes less important. But I think in order to win, they're going to have to be a little better of a passing team. It's a little bit chicken and egg. (laughs) That's you raise a good question. They're just going to have to, you know, Jalen Hurts proving himself. Be having a great year and yeah. developing as a passer, uh, you know, who sees options and and makes reads and things like that. Uh, that's how you get there, I guess. Yeah, and I think short term, I'll add to what Les said. I would I would say trade. They tried to trade for Calvin Ridley. We brought up Robert Woods. If you trade for somebody, they got to come in. <laughs> There's no. Uh, they, you know, they might be unhappy. They might prefer to go somewhere else, but they're under contract. They got to come in. And then if you play better and Calvin Ridley was here and he caught mm-hmm. 80 balls for 1300 yards, like he did in Atlanta, um, you know, maybe the narrative changes. So I think the trade market is something people don't realize is real. And mm-hmm. Robert Woods makes a lot of sense. He's coming off a torn ACL. So you have to be, yeah. it's got to be medically cleared, but, they have too many receivers in, in the Rams. I mean, those guys aren't going to be happy because all of them is you, there's only one football. You right. got to get the ball to Cooper Cup. You got to get the ball now first and foremost. Are they going to bring OBJ back? Now they have Allen Robinson. Yeah. Is there room for well, Robert the, Woods? I don't you, think so. You brought up the Ridley thing, John, and that's that's probably not been discussed enough. You know, teams go into free agency with with plans. You know, clearly with the Eagles, Hassan Reddick was, you know, they they knew in Indianapolis a couple weeks ago that they were going to sign Hassan Reddick, I'll bet. And I'm thinking from what we're hearing that they had this trade for Calvin Ridley, you know, that they had that in their pocket and they thought yeah. that was their wide receiver. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And, uh, you know, him betting on games last year wasn't on anybody's radar (laughs) until it all of a sudden, whoops. Uh, So they kind of had probably went into scramble mode a little bit after that. You know, um, that's a heck of a thing to have happen to you. Yeah, that's Uh, some bad luck. I mean, yeah, yeah, because that's plan A. And you do have to have contingencies. And I think they did. And I think Kirk was one of them all of a sudden. The Jaguars just play him, pay him outrageous money, and 
yeah, you start going down the board and eh, it's not as good as your original plan. Let's put it that way. Right. And we'll see how it takes out. What is plan B or C or D or E or F that the Eagles get themselves a wide receiver. All right. Uh, Les, this is the official nitpicking part of the <laughs> show. And if I confuse you, I will apologize in advance because I'm pretty damn confused myself. And John attempted to unconfuse me <laughs> yesterday in a series of texts, and he didn't come close to doing so. Um, Nick Sirianni's contract, when he first came to the Eagles, was a four-year deal. Mm -hmm. And he's already coached one year. So that tells me he's got three years left on his contract. So everywhere, everyone is reporting that Howie Roseman signed a three-year contract extension, which means he had a year to go, which would be this upcoming year, 2022 and he tacked three more years on top of it so that means how he's going to be the gm for another four years contractually but nick sirianni only has three years left on his deal and everyone is reporting that their deals run concurrently well no they don't how he's got an extra year because he did a three-year extension to the one year he had and i know that it all comes down to the way calendar <laughs> Right. But, but if you say, John, if you say it runs through, that's the mm -hmm. way everybody is reporting it. It runs through a specific season. Does that that season in does that not include that season? If it runs through, you would think it goes to the end of that season, but it doesn't. It goes to the date of when it's signed, which is the early part of the year. January with how we were told it was several weeks ago. So it probably was signed in February. It's very deceiving, and I, it, it annoys the snot out of me. Am I just a nitpicker, uh, Les? That's pretty nitpicky, Jody. I have no idea uh, what the deal is there. The important thing is he's got a new contract, so he's not going to get fired this year or probably next year. Although, if the season's a disaster, they can fire him. There's no salary cap for general managers. Very you, know, true. you can fire a general manager – the only yeah. thing that matters with a general manager is whether his contract is up or not. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, after that, I don't pay it any attention whatsoever. Now, they, they put themselves in a situation where Howie's contract is not going to be up for the next few years. So, you know, they're not they're clearly not looking to move on, but. They can move on at any point. It's it me. It's meaningless. You know, the contract isn't gonna. They're not gonna. If they go two and fifteen next season, they're not gonna say, ah, oh, yeah, they're gonna darn, fire the coach. We've yeah. we've got Howie under contract for a couple more years yeah. here. I, I guess we'll just have to keep keep on with this. Well, they I, might keep on with Howie, but they're gonna no, fire the coach. No, they will not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's a joke. It, it, it um, just doesn't really matter unless yeah. the guy's contract is up. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's you're right, Joe. They are people are saying that, and I don't, I don't have an answer for you. It's, it's a good, you know, eagle eye uh, catch by you, but I don't think it's really meaningful. Uh, yeah, we in, all in got our, we, we all have our nitpicks. One of my nitpicks, Les, is passer rating. People call it, when people call it quarterback rating. It's yeah, there's that's a different stat. It's passer rating. Uh, yeah, ESPN drives... has quarterback rating, which yeah. no one else uses. Yeah, yeah, but that is a different stat that's you know figured entirely differently, and it doesn't yeah. encompass the passer rating. So right, it doesn't encompass Jalen Hurts's ability to run the football, for instance. So, uh, it one of my pet peeves. Nobody cares. So, see, I like when people start talking about the referees. There is only one referee. There yeah, are a lot of officials only one. Yeah, on the exactly. field. Exactly. There's that's a good one. one. There aren't any referees. That's a good one. When when people call the NBA season a year, that drives me crazy because it goes, it encompasses, it's a season because it encompasses two calendar years. Okay. All but right. again, that's a pet peeve. It doesn't really matter. But here's the thing. What I was trying to explain with Jody, I, I'm doing contracts run, as you know, less player contracts and March to March. They don't end yeah. after a season, March to right. March. Uh, Nick Sirianni's runs January to January. It might be February to February uh, for other coaches who get hired a little bit later in the hiring cycle. Um, executives, personnel executives, scouts run May to May after the draft. Everybody's on a different calendar. Everybody's yeah. on a different calendar. Um, so when you say um, 
You know, it depends on the text you get. My guess is somebody got a text that the Eagles said through uh, right. 20, you know. Nick, they're they're aligned. That's They're aligned, and that's yeah. generally what you do with a head coach in a and, GM. And I think Nick's success or lack thereof will have an impact on – with or how it gets oh, sure. the contract. Because it's going to be yeah, I, I don't think, you know, people will, we all kid, you know, Howie's been here since he was a small child, <laughs> uh, you know, and I think we all kid about how they're never going to do, you know, he's he's there for life. He's But we've seen hey. in the past with oh, Joe yeah. Banner. Joe, with Joe was Lurie's a childhood friend. Of childhood Jeffrey. friend. Yeah. We've seen with Andy Reid. We've seen... Yeah. You know, Jeffrey Lurie, if the Eagles don't do well <laughs> soon, <laughs> you know, if, if this rebuilding project that Howie is undertaking doesn't go well, Howie will not be the general manager three or four or five years from now. No. You know, I mean, well, he's already less. He's already the only general manager that has gotten higher three coaches or yeah. had his, yeah. you know, to, to do four. That would be a tough sell. That would and be also, a really tough sell. I'll bring this up real quickly. There's the whole matter of, you know, Jeffrey's 70 and his son, Julian, Julian is suddenly yeah. taking a much uh, more visible role in the organization it is very close to Alec Hallaby, the, yeah. uh, the analytics guy uh, who probably has aspirations to be a general manager someday. Um, so, and we don't know how all that's going to shake out down yeah. the line maybe Every, way down. everybody has a shelf life yeah there's Even nothing Howie forever Roseman, you know yeah and i would bet i think you're right les i think the howie roseman era i'm going to predict it right now will end when the eagles shift from jeffrey laurie to julian laurie yeah that's my prediction and that could be 10 years from now i was going to say yeah. Yeah, the, the good prediction j mac but you got to add the year to it. Could you got to tell me what year no, this is happening. I don't want to go that far. Could be two, <laughs> could be ten. That's my prediction Yeah, when it ends for Howie. <laughs> All right, so Jeff Laurie's still in charge this year, and the Eagles did get Hassan Reddick, which I thought was a very good signing. Kind of predicted it a year in advance. And McMullen's going to be pretty – I predicted they were going to sign Hassan Reddick last year. And they didn't, yeah, but I they got they him should. this year, so – I uh, thought they should have. I was a little disappointed they didn't last year. Right. You and I were on that same page. All right. So uh, when does Jeff crack the whip and say, Howie, okay, we got this Fletcher Cox thing done, which, oh, by the way, they don't. We'll see if it shakes out in the next 24 hours. What's going to be the next thing the Eagles do? Or are we going to wait till July like we did last yeah. year for Steven Nelson? How many days, McMullen, did you and I have to do Bird 65? Oh, yeah. When are they going to get CB2? And Steve Nelson, did, by the way, they showed okay up with that. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to remember. Yeah, they did end up with a CB two, and he was a very decent, very solid yeah. CB two. He wasn't yeah. an All Pro, but he was okay. You know, yeah, he showed and up that's two what, days before camp, and he was starting on the first day of camp. Right, he was out yes. there. Yeah, they need they need to fix their safety situation. And they need a wide receiver, but it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. You know, or next week. Uh, Again, I, the draft is really in the long run. The, I mean, nobody – I've never heard of the Eagles having three first-round picks. I don't believe they've ever had three, three first-round picks. Now, whether they'll actually make three first-round picks is, is an excellent question. But that's the – again, for me, that's the offseason. You know, that's what Howie Roseman gets evaluated on and uh, in the long run, what he does with this golden opportunity to add – you know, vital talent to the young end of the roster. And they have to do, they do have to do some, do a decent job of filling in some spots, uh, in, you know, between now and training camp. But uh, I just don't think uh, free agency is going to make them. I don't think there's anything they can do at this point in free agency. That's going to make you say, all right, you know, 12 and five, uh, you know, they're right up there with uh, the best teams in the NFC. <laughs> All right, Les, last one for me, and follow Les on Twitter, at Les Bowen, still doing some work with the Associated Press. Always appreciate him coming on the program. Two, actually, I'm going to stick you with two. Okay. Because for people that don't know, Les used to cover the Philadelphia Flyers before the Philadelphia Eagles. So one, is Claude Giroux going to get traded? That's number one. 
And number two, did you see that Carson Wentz suit at, at the oh introductory press conference? <laughs> yes. Uh, on the uh, on the Giroux thing, uh, yeah, he, apparently he didn't go with them to Ottawa last night. They're playing in Ottawa tonight. So obviously they're trading him. Um, it's probably going to be for prospects. Uh, he, he's a free agent at the end of the season. So the team that gets him is just getting him for the playoffs. Um, so you're not going to get like some outrageous haul of, you know, great players, even, even though he's a, still a very, very good player. Uh, you're going to get a couple prospects and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I guess Florida is whatever, I'm, you know, I have no connection with this anymore in terms of reporting, but uh, everybody's saying the Florida Panthers are, are willing to give up a couple of good prospects for Claude Giroux. And that would be a good, you know, good spring destination, spring break for Claude uh, in Florida. The Carson Wentz thing, oh, my God, that's cute. <laughs> uh, you know, there were a lot of talks about hot dogs and mustard. And yeah, I, my thought was when he gets traded to Kansas City in a few years, he can, he can trot that same outfit <laughs> out again. Uh, he looked like their mascot, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. The Carson Wentz thing, though, John, the, uh, the press conference, uh, you probably noticed this. He was asked about Chris Ballard, the Indianapolis general manager, yeah, saying yeah. that uh, some of the criticism was justified. And he was asked if he, if he agreed. And his answer was, well, you'll have to say which criticism because there's so many of them. Ooh. You know, and that's just such a deflecting, yeah. not dealing with the subject matter answer. That was like Chip Kelly level, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so disappointing. That to me indicates a guy that just isn't ready to confront his shortcomings and talk about them in an honest way. And it, uh, I don't think it boded well. That's been Carson's way for a good couple of years now, so no one should really be that surprised by it. And I actually thought he gave a good answer about coming back here to Philadelphia, that he knows he's going to hear a little bit of everything and it's noise and you got to be able to push the noise aside. I actually thought he gave a good answer to that one. Maybe not the one about the criticism in Indianapolis. And oh, by the way, since we're all making predictions, Claude Giroux goes to Florida today but he re-signs with the Flyers this offseason. Mm, very uh, very think, well could happen, yeah. Takes those couple months, goes down, makes a Stanley Cup run, lets his young sons get a little sun in their face, but then he comes back here to Philadelphia because much like Fletcher Cox, I think he likes Philadelphia. You see, for all you free agents out there, the people who have been here for a long time want to stay here. Even if they leave, they come back. So why don't you just show up for a first time? All right, that's great stuff. Appreciate you coming on. As always, Thanks, bud. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thanks, Les nice, nice. Bowen here with us on Birds 365. All right, we still got almost an hour to play. John McMullen, Jody McDonald coming back on Birds 365.